Welcome to the BDO Tax Support for Professionals Budget and Finance 2020 webinar. My name is Malcolm Pengelly and with my TSP colleagues we're here to guide you through the key matters relevant to your clients. Let me introduce you to our speakers. I'll set the scene and run through the government's response to COVID-19. Jeff Weber will run through the business tax and stamp taxes changes. He will be followed by Chris Holmes, covering the personal tax, employment tax and national insurance matters. Terry Bruce will cover indirect tax matters, including BAT. And finally, I will deal with HMRC powers and enforcement including the EBT loan charge. So let's get started. First, a quick word about BDO tax support for professionals. We appreciate that during the forthcoming few weeks, while people are working remotely, that their working life can be difficult and isolated, particularly for tax professionals. If you need help with a tax query, no matter how small, do call the tax line on 0845 356 0006 or any of the consultants directly or alternatively contact them by email. We will be open throughout to help you. If you're not already a subscriber, you can find details of how to sign up at www.bdo.co.uk backslash TSP. And here are your key contacts details for reference. Do keep it handy. Let's have a quick summary of the uh, main budget and finance bill highlights. Although it does seem a long time ago now, uh, here are the highlights of the budget. COVID-19 response uh, on budget day, the Chancellor announced a fund of 12 billion pounds. Uh, since then, he's announced a further 20 billion uh, to be added to it. Uh, the Bank of England on budget day cut interest rates by half of a, half of a percent. Um, I suppose the main tax matter was entrepreneurs relief, which was substantially reduced and Chris will be telling you more about this. On the property front, there are substantial changes coming for non-resident landlords from April 2020 and reporting and paying tax on residential property income and gains from the 6th of April 2020 will be accelerated. In a surprise announcement, the off-payroll labour charges, otherwise known as IR35, have been deferred to April 2021, just a week after the government said in the budget that they would go ahead as planned. As always, HMRC is looking to collect more from its activities on avoidance and evasion, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And just in case you got bored with the budget, there'll be another one coming around in the autumn. I think the eye-catching matter of the budget and the days subsequent to it um, was that Rishi Sunak announced a £12 billion package on budget day of help for business. This included uh, £5 billion to support the NHS. We mustn't forget them. Um, uh, there was a, quite a lot on business rates, 100% um, relief in 2021 for the retail, leisure and hospitality uh, sector, which will cover 90% of businesses. Um, there's going to be business rates discounts and a fundamental review of the rateable system. Um, subsequent to that, um, Mr Sunak has gone further uh, He's since announced on the 17th of March a further £20 billion of assistance by way of financial support. And he has reiterated that the government 
will do whatever it takes to help companies through the crisis. This includes 330 billion of government loan guarantees, enabling businesses to borrow from banks at attractive interest rates. Um, for the smaller company, they will have access to business interruption loans worth up to five million pounds with no interest charged for six months. There will also be grants of £25,000 for companies using properties with a rateable value of less than £51,000. And the smallest companies in exposed sectors will get ca cash grants of £10,000. All of this on top of the budget announcements. There are also a couple of other, couple of other matters uh, to help businesses through the troubled times. Um, businesses with fewer than 250 employees will be able to claim back statutory sick pay for up to 14 days. Um, that the Chancellor estimated would be two billion pounds for up to two million businesses. Um, we don't know the time scale or the start date uh, at the moment for uh, the cash to start to flow. Uh, importantly, um, also on a cash flow, uh, a bit of cash flow assistance, there will be 2,000 extra call handlers uh, to support time to pay arrangements. And importantly, and we'll repeat this phone number later in the presentation, there is a dedicated time to pay helpline for COVID-19. And the telephone number, you want to write it down, is 0800. 0159559. Don't worry if you didn't get that, I'll repeat, I'll repeat it at the end. In short, the government's uh, approach is a massive cash injection to the economy. Uh, altogether, it brings the direct spending of the government up to 1.5% of GDP. And uh, at that, I will hand you over to Jeff Weber. Our review of business tax changes will include corporation tax rates, corporate loss restriction, intangible fixed assets, capital allowances, research and development tax credits, and non-residential landlords. The main corporation tax rate remains at 19% as the Chancellor was prevented from uh, introducing the hope for reduction to 17% due to economic circumstances, the various other rates uh, shown on the slide remain unchanged. The corporate loss restriction introduced from April 2017 means that only the first 5 million and 50% of the excess over 5 million uh, of losses can be relieved uh, when brought forward. From 1 April 2020, only 50% of a company's chargeable gains in an accounting period can be relieved by capital gains losses brought forward, and the £5 million deduction allowance will be shared between the capital gain losses and other losses allocated as the company chooses. With regard to corporation tax treatment of intangible fixed assets, in other words, corporate intangibles, the rules don't currently apply to assets created or acquired before 1 April 2002. So under current rules, in any typical uh, company, some assets will fall within the capital gains rules uh, and some within the corporate intangibles rules, which is just a little messy. Uh, there will be an element of clearing up when the new rules come in as they seek to ensure that all assets acquired after 1 July 2020 will be taxed under one regime, which means that the pre 1 April 2002 assets acquired from related parties from 1 July 2020 onwards 
will be taxed under the corporate intangibles rules. There is still um, a hiatus when such assets were acquired between um, April 2002 and 1 July 2020. So we'll have to see if the Chancellor will do anything about this in future. As far as capital allowances are concerned, there are quite a lot of changes from April 2020. The uh, writing down allowances on qualifying expenditure will remain at 18% for the main rate and 6% at special rates. However, the structures and buildings allowance uh, will be increased from 2% to 3% a year, which is helpful as it reduces the time to uh, uh, to receive allowances on the entire cost from about 50 year from 50 years to just over 33 years. The 100% enhanced capital allowances for first year expenditure on plant machinery within designated assistance areas of enterprise zones is going to be extended to at least 31 March 2021. It would otherwise have expired on 31 March 2020. The annual investment allowance limit stays at a million pounds, uh, although this is due to expire on 31 December 2020. Um, it may well be that the Chancellor will be looking at this between now and, and the autumn statement, and he may take a view then uh, at the time of the autumn statement on whether he's going to let the million pound limit expire or introduce something new. We shall have to wait and see. The 100% first year allowances on low emission cars and, and other vehicles uh, is going to be extended by four years instead of ending in April 2021. Um, again, the CO2 emissions thresholds, which determine the availability of um, first year allowance and the rate of writing down allowance will once again reduced. Uh, and the increased first year allowance for electric car charging points uh, will um, will be at 150% of expenditure, which is good news. This is obviously designed to uh, improve the in infrastructure and introduce a wider network of electric car charging points. Um, however, the 100% enhanced capital allowances and first year tax credit for loss making companies uh, when they purchase energy or water saving plant machinery on the uh, specified lists are going to be abolished. As far as R&D tax credits on the large company scheme are concerned, the rate of credit is going to rise from 12% to 13% for qualifying R&D expenditure from 1 April 2020. And there is going to be a consultation on whether expenditure on data and cloud computing should qualify in large companies. In the SME R&D scheme, which is even more attractive, where the company is loss making, it can claim a repayable tax credit at 14.5% of costs. That will continue, but a new cap will apply to the amount repayable. Um, the precise details uh, have not yet been published, uh, but the cap is going to be deferred until 1 April 2021. And in the meantime, there is going to be further consultation on the cap's design. Turning to non-resident landlords and the changes from April 2020, offshore corporate owners of UK property currently pay income tax on their rental profit, but from 6 April 2020, these rentals will be taxed under the UK corporation tax regime, where all the corporation tax rules will apply, both helpful and unhelpful. The differences between the regimes will include things like treatment of finance costs and uh, also corporate intangibles. What was not clear was how the transition would work for some items, such as pre-commencement interest. However, the budget measures are seeking to address these anomalies. But nevertheless, the transition is likely to be complex, and we strongly advise 
that specific advice should be sought in any particular case where there are transitional issues. Finally, we're looking at stamp taxes and in particular stamp duty land tax, that's SDLT and ATED. There will be a 2% surcharge on the purchase of residential property located in England or Northern Ireland where purchased by non-UK residents, but this does not become effective until 1 April 2021. The surcharge will apply in addition to existing SDLT rates so that surcharges for individuals buying second homes uh, will be facing a top rate of SDLT on residential property of 17%. And this will also apply to companies buying residential property. One interesting point is that relief will be available for qualifying housing cooperatives from the 15% flat rates of SDLT. And there will also be relief from ATED on purchases of dwellings of over 500,000. Uh, the SDLT relief in England and Northern Ireland will take effect from the date of the autumn budget 2020. And the UK wide ATED relief will take effect from 1 April 2021 with a possible refund available for 2020-21. Hello, I'm Chris Holmes, a member of the BDO Tax Support for Professionals Tax Life team in London. Uh, like many of the uh, TSP team, I'm also involved in providing tax technical support to the wider BDO firm on a wide range of matters. I will today be covering personal tax, employment tax and NIC. All right, let's start off with a prerequisite slide required of any seminar on the budget, which is a summary of what's changed. Um, as you'll see, not much. Um, there has been a, a small change to both the blind person allowance and the married couples allowance, uh, both increased by CPI. Moving on to CGT, as you'll see, the uh, annual exemption uh, has increased slightly, but otherwise no change. Right, now moving on to employment taxes. Uh, originally, I had about three slides covering the uh, changes of off-payroll labour and IR35, but um, following announcement earlier this week that it's all being deferred for a year, um, it's, uh, I've been able to replace them with this uh, slide and cut my talk down. The, uh, in effect, I think the important thing to note for all of our clients is that uh, work they have done so far in respect of off-payroll labour has not been wasted. This will come into effect. It's just been deferred by a year. It still will probably be good practice to be reviewing everything as soon as possible and try and implement uh, changes. Make sure that, you, that you've got the proper arrangement in place with all the intermediaries and such like providing you with workers uh, uh, or or providing you work if you're if you're at the other end of the uh, uh, the relationship. Um, there are have been some specific some recent changes to the uh, finance bill talking about the way that uh, you know liabilities of the various parties, especially if um, if if the the message about the employment status and things like that are not passed down the line. So um, it is important to make sure that um, you have arrangements with uh, with the intermediaries uh, and that they contractually sign up to that, that they'll pass on the information uh, as required and operate POYE and all of those sorts of things. So, um, yes. Company car and van benefits. Um, ultimately, the government have uh, really trying to push, push the uh, zero emission vehicles. Currently, uh, the a zero emission car has a 16% rate for benefit uh, for, for car benefit rules. This will cut down to zero for 2021. It will then go up slightly to 1% in 21, 22 and 2% in 22, 23. So it's very much a drive for uh, zero emission cars uh, for, for obvious reasons. Um, there is also a comment that the van benefit charge will go down to zero for carbon emission cars from next year, from April 21. There's a couple of other employment tax changes uh, where basically if if you're providing uh, counselling services, um, the exemption now can include CBT therapy. Um, so in addition to the other types of welfare counselling um, and furthermore, there's a uh, there's a there's a change that uh, 
that, that makes certain payments from um, for, for made made to persons leaving care uh, whilst they're uh, in, in starting an apprenticeship uh, to be tax exempt and, and NIC exempt. Uh, moving on to national minimum wage, uh, there's some new rates applying from April. Um, there are also some interesting uh, rights for workers that are coming to effect, which uh, your, your your clients may need to be aware of. Um, these are more employment rights than than tax, but uh, but you just need to, these these are for workers who are not necessarily employees. Right, now, quickly moving on to national insurance contributions. Is the requisite list um, showing what's changed? Uh, not much is the answer. The uh, primary threshold uh, above which you start paying national insurance or the employee starts paying national insurance has been raised to effectively £9,500, which was a manifesto promise. Um, and the employment allowance has increased to £4,000. Looking at the other rates, they've all increased slightly, again with the class 4 threshold increasing to uh, £9,500 uh, in line with the manifesto. There's been a couple of minor changes, basically bringing uh, the first one bringing in class 1A NIC in line with income tax uh, in respect of uh, termination awards and sporting testimonial payments. Um, and there is a new employer's uh, NIC relief where an employee take an employer takes on former armed personnel, uh, armed service personnel. So uh, that's that will apply from 2021. Um, my final slide um, deals with statutory sick pay. There has been lots of amendments, lots of uh, announcements to do with COVID uh, and coronavirus uh, over the last uh, few weeks effectively SSP is available from day one and for employers with less than 250 employees um, they can claim the first 14 days back from uh, HMRC. Um, there are a number of conditions and, and something about when SSP may or may not apply um, but uh, generally this has all been in the news quite a lot lately. Um, so um, that, and that concludes my section of the seminar. Thanks. Indirect taxes. In the last budget, the VAT registration threshold was frozen at £85,000 per annum until the 1st of April 2020. In this budget, the Chancellor's confirmed that there will be no further rate rises or changes in the VAT registration threshold until 1st of April 2022. The government is to scrap the controversial tampon tax and abolish VAT on all women's sanitary products from 2021. Tampons and other women's sanitary products currently attract 5% VAT. This will be dropped when the transition period for Britain's departure from the EU ends on the 31st of December 2020. The government estimates that the tax cut will lead to typical savings of 7p on a pack of 20 tampons and 5p on a pack of 12 pads which could save the average woman an estimated £40 over her lifetime. The Chancellor also announced that the Government will introduce legislation to apply a zero rate of VAT to e-publications from the 1st of December 2020. This will extend zero rating to e-books, e-newspapers, e-magazines and academic e-journals, but not to audiobooks. The VAT liability of digital publications has been a contentious issue for many years as HMRC's view has always been that e-publications were not covered by the zero rate under a strict interpretation of the VAT legislation. This position was recently challenged successfully in the Upper Tribunal decision in the case of News Corp UK and Ireland Limited, which determined that the VAT treatment of the print and digital versions of newspapers should be the same. HMRC has appealed this decision. However, whilst details have not been published yet, the Chancellor's budget announcement indicates that the principles of the decision have now been accepted. The decision in News Corp opens up the opportunity for VAT refund claims, subject to capping and unjust enrichment arguments, for businesses which have charged VAT on e-publications. Probably more importantly, charities and other businesses for whom VAT is an absolute cost have the opportunity to seek credit notes and refunds from their suppliers. 
There could also be wider opportunities for businesses, such as member organisations or charities, which provide e-publications as part of membership packages or subscriptions, to revisit apportionment methods and or partial exemption methods. The Government has also confirmed that from the 1st of January 2021, i.e. the end of the Brexit transition period, that registered businesses will be able to account for VAT on goods they import from all countries, including the EU, on their periodic VAT return. This means that instead of paying VAT on goods at the time of import or later if a business has a duty deferment guarantee, any VAT on importations from all countries, not just European member states, will be included on the VAT return in the same way acquisitions are at present. Thus, import VAT will be declared and recovered as input tax on the same VAT return. For most fully taxable businesses, this will result in a nil next tax position as input tax and output tax will be equal and opposite. Environmental taxes. To reduce the problem of excessive and environmentally harmful plastic packaging and to incentivise manufacturers to use recycled plastic, the government intends to introduce a tax on the production and import of plastic packaging from April 2022. The tax of £200 per tonne will apply to plastic packaging which does not contain at least 30% recycled plastic. A consultation has been launched on the detailed implementation of the tax, including a de minimis exemption and determination of who in the supply chain should be liable to the tax. Thank you, Terry. Let's now look at um, the uh, HMRC powers and uh, what's happening on tax administration. Um, we've already mentioned at the beginning of this webinar the COVID-19 assistance. Um, as I promised, it's worth repeating the COVID-19 helpline uh, number for those uh, looking to arrange time to pay arrangements. The number again is 0800 0159 559. Uh, HMRC have agreed to waive late interest penalties and interest for those who enter into a bespoke time to pay arrangement with them. This will help businesses struggling with cash flow, allowing them to spread liabilities over a manageable period. Uh, HMRC has uh, confirmed that uh, the much trailed changes to the preferential uh, creditor rules on liquidation um, will go ahead from the 1st of December uh, 2020. Um, HMRC will have preferential creditor status for taxes collected by businesses um, including VAT and PAYE. Uh, there is no change in the status of businesses' own taxes like uh, corporation tax and employer national insurance. Um, concern has been expressed over the HMRC um, preference uh, pushing up the costs of finance. Um, so uh, perhaps uh, it, it's surprising that uh, this change is going ahead, albeit from the 1st of December 2020. Um, the loan charge. Um, Budget 2020 confirms that the um, government's response to Sir Amir's Morse's independent loan charge review. Um, the, the highlights are that the charge will only apply to outstanding loans made on or after the 9th of December 2010. Uh, they won't apply to loans made between 9th of December 2010 and 5th of April 2016, where the taxpayer made a reasonable disclosure of the loan on his tax return and HMRC didn't open an inquiry. Um, importantly, there is, some, uh, uh, there is some help in that a person can elect to spread the amount of their outstanding loan balance in three evenly, three even installments across the three years uh, starting in 2018-19. So, uh, a little bit of help. Um, for taxpayers who 
settled their uh, charge um, in respect of a loan's advance before the 9th of December 2010, they can apply for a refund of amounts paid uh, to the inland revenue. So uh, that is good news, but as we will come to in a second, it's not the end of the matter. So all of these matters will be legislated for in Finance Bill 2020. Um, however, uh, HMRC is still concerned that the so-called disguised remuneration schemes continue to be used and they will uh, in due course issue a call for evidence uh, to try and uh, work towards stamping out uh, these schemes. Uh, one final point on this one to take away, and that is it's important to remember that a payment of the loan charge does not bring HMRC's investigations into disguised remuneration planning to a conclusion. Um, all the loan charge really is, is a payment on account of the final tax liability. So uh, I think this one will run and run. Um, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be a budget without uh, HMRC turning its attention to avoidance uh, and evasion, and uh, it's continuing its fight to uh, shrink the tax gap, which it currently estimates to be at uh, 35 billion. Um, the proposals, the uh, revenue estimate, will uh, bring in an extra 4.7 billion pounds. Uh, over the next uh, four or five years, um, a number of interesting a number of interesting um, points to raise for you. From April 2021, large businesses will be required to notify HMRC if they take a position in their tax computations that HMRC is likely to challenge. In other words, basically, hands up. Um, the government is to consult on this. It's not coming in until April 2021. And hopefully there will be some guidance as to uh, what likely challenge actually means. Uh, it's a bit vague at the moment. Um, there's also uh, uh, a couple of clamp downs, a clamp down to ensure businesses pay the tax that they owe. Uh, the revenue estimate that will collect 55 million. And tackling the hidden economy another 155 million over the next four years. Um, the big one, though, is um, uh, an investment in to 1,300 additional compliance officers and new technology. Uh, HMRC are anticipating that will collect another 3.92 billion. In other words, the lion's share of the 4.7 billion. Um, Finally, there will be uh, further powers to enable HMRC to act against scheme promoters. And it's a little light on um, what those powers might be, um, but it's with a view to closing down the, um, the tax avoidance market. That's, that much is certainly clear. So that brings us to the end of our Budget and Finance Bill webinar. Uh, if you have any queries on anything we've covered today, do not hesitate to call or email the BDO contacts shown at the beginning of this presentation or call the tax line on 0845 356 0006. You can also download the slides at www.bdo dot co dot uk backslash tsp thank you for listening